on the picture back there. Yeah. Uh, turn, turn to Revelation uh, chapter 18. And uh, we will just kind of overlap a tiny bit to where we were last, uh, two weeks ago, but uh, for the most part, we're going to go on and, and we're going to try and finish up. <laughs> one chapter. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. And the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchandise anymore. Merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, purple, silk and scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every kind of object of ivory, every kind of object of the most precious wood, bronze, iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and incense, fragrant oil, and frankincense, wine and oil, fine flour, and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots, and bodies, and souls of men. Let's read the uh, but and fruit that your soul longed for has gone from you, and all the things which are rich and splendid are gone from you, and ye shall find them no more at all. Say, what a message to the people, to the business people. What he's basically saying, and, and uh, take, take note of the list that starts there in uh, chapter, or in verse 2, and uh, uh, carried that on down to the book verse that we just read, Matthew 11, then starts a list of all of the things that were considered wealth and things that were sought after in those days. And uh, I've read that two or three times, just to get the implication of it and, and the uh, import of the fact that there isn't really much left out that they didn't buy and sell and trade for in those days. And uh, it's gone. It's going to be gone. Uh, we know that about our situation today. We know that some of the things we struggle for, uh, no matter what they are, are going to be gone someday. Uh, we put a lot of effort into uh, what we call creature comforts. Uh, in other words, making ourselves comfortable, making our houses comfortable, uh, making uh, all kinds of uh, purchases and buy and sell, and uh, uh, it's all going to be gone. That last article there, it kind of turns your heart. Bodies and souls of men. Yeah. 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 I can't hear you. I said, ask them to talk lower. <laughs> because we can't hear this oh, cabin. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> sound booth. Sound booth? I think you're making sound. Go for it, George. Okay, next, next, next time I'll send Doris. <laughs> uh, yeah, back on Mary's point, I, I was hoping we could dwell on that a little bit, Mary, because that uh, kind of, you know, talking about material, worldly things uh, and uh, listing them all out. And right at the end, right, right at the end, he says, souls and slaves. Do not people become slaves to wealth if, if they have it? <laughs> um, well, and also um, with, a, with a trade of bodies and slaves coming across the border and, and in our country and all over the world, really. Yeah. Uh, unbelievers, what are they doing? Sex slaves all kinds of, you know, taking advantage of people in many different ways. And all that was involved in the trade and in the, in the consumption of the people that were not God's people. And yes. That's the people that are left at this point behind and just uh, 
And when that ends, all of their uh, endeavors are gone. Yeah, yeah. Everything that was important to them. Yeah. All of a sudden. That's why Jesus said, lay up treasures in heaven. Yeah. You know, they, that, they will be there. They will be there. And uh, that could be a whole other topic. <laughs> That's how we do that, but basically, it, it's a mindset that the things of God are important. It keeps us in church. It keeps us in His Word. It keeps us witnessing to other people. And these are all things that we will go with. And I, I would say there's two things that we we'll, can take with us to heaven. Uh, is if we can't take our new car or anything. Number one, we will uh, the people whom we bring to the Lord will be there. Amen. And number two the relationship with God that we cultivate here. Um, God, uh, in fact, uh, uh, Jesus himself said he was going to stand at the gate and he was going to turn some people away. And what was the reason he gave for turning away? You never, I never knew you. He yeah, didn't say I'm turning you away because you didn't go to church enough or you didn't help the uh, or needy, or uh, whatever thing that you shirked your duties here and there. Didn't mention those things at all. Just one thing, I never knew you. Uh, so, the theme in here that I think uh, Jesus is, is coming to and has come to in Revelation is don't trust in material things, in worldly things. Uh, our trust is in we, our trust is in the TV. It just came on. <laughs> I think this goals of bodies and goals of men, the slave trade, is. Uh, I wonder if we shouldn't think about how the banking system that we live under now is another form of enslavement. Because if you have a mortgage, like I do, and you have a job, then you have sort of an enslaved ob obligation. In Proverbs it says, he that is indebted to another is a slave to that one. And mm -hmm. now the President of the United States has threatened the livelihood of 80 million people in our country on Thursday. And we talked about this last Sunday. Um, because they're not willing, not wanting to comply with something that he thinks everybody should do. And there's a spirit of slavery. Yeah, okay. I, I don't want to get into the political oh, part yeah, of this whole thing, but uh, I think your, Jonathan's point is very well taken. The federal government is getting more and more of us all the time, <laughs> and more is one way, because they're all backed by the federal government. If uh, the bank goes bank, uh, corrupt, corrupt, bankrupt, and we go and, make, and don't make our payments, the uh, federal government ends up owning the land. Yeah. I, I think it, it, it fits in with this, but I, just this morning I heard uh, a message on, uh, you know, referring to Revelation and the things that are coming, that we know are coming, but socialism that we oppose, I oppose, and most of us here, I believe, oppose, is actually going to be coming to set up, like you've mentioned before, the kingdom for the for the for the beast for the evil. Yeah. Well, so it's coming. It, it, it's coming, and the uh, reign of the Antichrist, which we've been talking about, I have, you know, to conclude, and I think you guys to go along with it, is going to be a communist socialist right. dictatorship. That's that's cool. okay. Uh, I think there are some things going on right now today while we're sitting in this room that we need to, to pray for. And one is the human trafficking, yeah. the slavery. <laughs> Anybody say that slavery was abolished in the United States? Mm -hmm. That's not true. Just not true. They, they will find every now and then, some of them they'll find whole groups of 20 girls living in a motel somewhere yeah. on their way to the slave trade. Uh, in the United States. Yep. In the United States, so uh, the other uh, part of that that is, I think, pretty meaningful is the word soul. Yep. When we get to 
involved in material things as opposed to God, we are uh, giving the enemy part of our soul. Well, they, they joke about selling your soul to the devil. You know, yeah. it's no joke because they don't they don't take it seriously. No, no. Uh, <laughs> they made a movie about that. Uh, about the Yankees, yeah. and they, they could win if they all sell their souls to the devil. I never saw it, but I, I mean, just from reading it, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, um, but it's yeah, it's not. Uh, it, it's not just because it's not in the headlines that it's not happening, and just because it's happening to someone else does not keep it from happening to us. <laughs> Satan doesn't come in and say, say, forsake God and worship me and point at you. He comes in and says, this would be a little good thing. This would be a little good thing. So, and, and before we know it, we're, we're into it. Uh, okay, so what, we put this together with the beginning of the chapter and uh, chapters ahead of it. God is bringing all of the evil influences to Babylon to destroy it going to be gone. Uh, Babylon, whether it is a real city reconstructed in the same place, or whether it's just a concept, uh, you, you kind of have to sort that out however you want to look at it, but it does exist as a concept right now. Uh, the actual city of Babylon is, is destroyed. But as we see things happening here in this world today, and even in the United States, does it not fit into most of what we've been reading in Revelation? No. I mean, we're preparing. We're preparing. We're not in that tribulation yet. Uh, and I don't plan to be. I plan to, I plan to be gone. Uh, but the world is being set up. It's being set up right now for, for that to happen. Uh, it... Uh, Made a note there had once seemed profitable to cooperate with the Antichrist. Uh, it may be tempting to us to do something that is profitable, um, and it may be not illegal, maybe not immoral, anything, but if we get too involved in the world we pursue, then we, we uh, lessen the amount of time we spend. Jesus said it very plainly, you cannot serve God and man. He's like, like uh, uh, Joshua, choose this day. Choose this day. Uh, okay, let's uh, keep going on here. Okay, um, let's, let's read 15 through 19, chapter, uh, chapter 18. The merchants of these things who became rich by her will stand at a distance for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious uh, stones and pearls for no one else. For in one hour, there's a, another reference to how quickly it will come. For in a, sh I, I read that as a short time, such great riches came to nothing. It would be a sudden, sudden overnight. Um, the, uh, let's let's look at John six twenty seven. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal 
on him. Uh, there will be people in this time we're talking about who have taken the seal of the mark of the beast. Taking the seal on their forehead, or the number 666, or whatever it is going to be. Uh, so what this is just emphasizing what John is saying in Revelation, or what Jesus is saying, that it is foolish to put your trust in things that will not last. Uh, in uh, America, uh, time, time is one of the most valuable things we have. The minimum wage keeps going up, and, and uh, when we think of doing things, if we, we count the cost of materials, but also the cost of time, isn't it? Uh, do we waste time? Do we waste a lot of time? My wife's over there nodding her head. Uh, <laughs> we, we spend time at the computer, we spend time at the telephone, we spend time on Facebook, we spend time looking at uh, what happened to the dog that got lost in you know, New Jersey somewhere. Um, it, it's, it's just re ridiculous the way the enemy, or I would say this culture that we're in, has gone after our time. One of the most valuable things we have to offer the Lord is our time. And that is one that he has done a very, very good job. Um, churches across the country are having reduced income, reduced attendance, <coughs> so on because people are too busy doing other things that take the time to be taken care of. Uh, and we don't we don't really realize uh, I, I spent two weeks, I've mentioned before, uh, in, in Russia living in an apartment that they live in. And uh, there's nothing in it. Nothing in it. Uh, there, I, when I checked in, there happened to be a, a, a used dish towel there that was for bathing and washing dishes and doing everything. Uh, there were no uh, things that we normally think of in a, in a house, there no shelves, no books, no knickknacks. Um, the plaster was crumbling around here and so on. And my first inclination was, I'm going to call <laughs> and, and get something to take care of. I can't live like this for two weeks. And, but I, I didn't. And, you know, by the third day, I was enjoying it because I had nothing pulling on my time. I had things to read that I brought with me. I had my Bible and I had things. And, and I didn't have to uh, do anything. Particular. Uh, in my time off, but during the day I was pretty busy. Uh, but then I could go back to this crumbly little apartment, and it was just a relief. Oh, I don't have to feed the dog. I don't have to <laughs> do any anything. Um, so we have left. My point is, we have left our material things influence the way we think and where we spend our time, and it can become an obstacle to getting to know Jesus better. People are too busy to go to church or too busy to study the Bible. They right. don't have time to pray. Right, right. And you don't rearrange the furniture in a place like that. So there might not be any. There might be a, just one chair. <coughs> and it, uh, uh, it really made, made a point to me as to what we consider valuable, we think we can't do without. We can, but we don't. Yeah. We don't. Uh, so maybe we could just, uh, as a <laughs> outgrowth of this lesson, let's spend this next week with praying God to show us what we can do for you, to draw closer to you.
I'm not going to read the whole chapter, even though I didn't designate any. Uh, I would suggest that uh, take some time at home to read this chapter. It fits into our study of Revelation, and uh, especially some parts of it. Uh, I would like to read 25 and 26, which, which is the end of, of the chapter. Thus says the Lord God, when I have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered, and have hallowed them in the sight of the Gentiles, then they will dwell in their own dwell in their own land I gave to my servant Jacob. Now Israel is coming out of the places where they uh, have been scattered, but this is a, a, a prophecy that uh, God tried to fulfill or wanted to fulfill when they came out of slavery in Egypt, when they came out of bondage and slavery in uh, the Near East, in Syria, in Babylon. Uh, but it has never been, <coughs> been done. It's going to be happening. And they will dwell safely there, build houses, plant vineyards. Yes, they will dwell securely when I execute judgment on all those around them who despise them. Then shall they know that I am the Lord their God. And using their tragedy to make them recognize, yes, you are my Lord. That's, that's, the, that's the purpose uh, of they doing this. And this is most of the tribulation period we're studying about is directly aimed at the Hebrews, God's chosen people, to have them recognize and follow him. And uh, that, is, is, we know, is through accepting the only Messiah, Jesus. It's the only, only way. Uh, so anyway, if you would like to read the rest of that, uh, do it home and, and uh, kind of give us a little more context and uh, a little more insight into what we're, we're studying. Uh, okay, we're still on 15th and 19th. Uh, first, we have businesses when they lost. We have a little bit of an uh, inkling of this uh, in the Great Depression. Uh, not, no, nobody in here can remember the Great Depression. <laughs> uh, but uh, my, my parents have told about it and, and uh, were affected by it drastically. Uh, and, uh, and many of your families have been in World War II and have been in, through the Depression. And where people, uh, they would work all day to get a handful of beans for the family that night. It was pretty, pretty, pretty bad. Uh, but the people who went through that in poverty came out as some of the strongest people that I knew when I was growing up. They had a uh, concept of right and wrong, a concept of conserving the things that God has trusted you with. And they, built, if anybody, built this America, this America. And then they fought World War II, which has been referred to as the greatest generation. Those are people who came out of the Great Depression and survived and thrived because of what they had, had learned. <coughs> now, the warning here, there was another group in the Great Depression. Uh, and I've seen pictures on, and uh, I've heard people tell about it, that men on Wall Street were literally jumping out of windows, uh, many of them, not just a few, but many of them, to commit suicide because they had lost their wealth. <coughs> means nothing to them when the chips are down. Uh, let's, let's look at uh, 1 John 2.15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Okay, a pretty strong, harsh statement, is not but he, like I said, he has said before that, can't love God and man. You've got to choose. 
just choose. Uh, we're not forced to choose because we don't have anybody with guns here saying, uh, don't ever preach about Jesus in this building again or I'll shoot. Okay. So there and then we have to make a choice. But we're not brought to that yet. We can live with one foot in the grave and or one foot on heaven and one foot in hell uh, for quite a while. And people do. But eventually, eventually, the choice is is final. And it is one or the other. And uh, yeah. Um, we actually saw a little bit of that about a year ago when they told us we can't hold churches. That's that's true. So don't my point is you can't say that we haven't seen that. Mm -hmm. We capitulate. We easily rolled over, is my point. Uh, yeah, yeah. We did. John MacArthur is a famous uh, writer and uh, uh, he is still holding church and, and uh, apparently has won his case unless somebody keeps appealing it. Uh, the fact that they can hold church, they don't need to shut it down. But uh, I don't want to get too far <laughs> into the thing of it, it, uh, debating whether the shop is a good thing or bad thing or whether social distancing is a good thing or bad thing. Uh, you know, it, it's here. Yeah, Al? In, in, in reference to love not the world or the things in the world, I think I mentioned that in our Thursday night study one time that uh, we had a pastor at Bethel one time and he had one of his sayings he repeated it quite a bit, and that is, we as Christians are not to love things, but we are to love people and use things, but so many times what the world does is they love things and they use people. Yep. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good, good point. point. I, I kind of remember that. I can't remember if that was, uh, which pastor that was, but because I can't think of his name right now. He was not there too long. Yeah. It must have been Rich Reynolds. Reynolds was his name. Oh, yeah. <coughs> that was before my time. <laughs> okay, let's go on. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God dies forever. <coughs> I mean, that's a that, that's a great passage, and it? it's so so fitting, so fitting. Uh, maybe this is helping us by kind of looking through the window into the tri great tribulation. Hopefully, it will enable us to organize our priorities a, a little bit different and uh, spend a little more time in prayer and Bible study and uh, things that. Are develop our relationship with God and uh, be an example to other people as well. Uh, okay. 20 to 21. Revelation, back to Revelation. Uh, Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets, for God has, God has avenged you on her. See the contrast? The people who have their trust in riches, they weep and wail. God is saying here, but you, <laughs> those who have uh, come to know him and are still on the earth at this time, rejoice. Rejoice. For you, the holy prophets and uh, apostles, for God has avenged you on earth. Uh, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Uh, okay. Uh, Micah 5 2. Jim Peterson used to say back in the clean pages, <laughs> which it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be. The Old Testament is essential. Knowing the Old Testament is essential to knowing the New Testament. It is one all, solid book from Genesis to Revelation. <clears throat> okay.
Jesus, Micah 5, 2, but you, O Bethlehem, Ephraim, pray this, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come to me the one to be ruler of Israel, whose goings of going forth are from old, from everlasting. Okay, he's telling them ahead of time that the Messiah is coming, and this will be something of value, not compared especially to what the people were going through uh, that we just read about, uh, the merchants and so on, losing everything that's valuable to them. Uh, skip down to uh, uh, verse 6. They shall waste with the sword the land of Assyria and the land of Nimrod at its entrances. We've talked about, about that, uh, Assyria and Nimrod and Babylon and uh, Iraq and, and so on. Uh, that uh, he is going to pour out his vengeance and we shall be, should be happy. I, I know there's something in me that I, can, I can't really take pleasure in somebody else getting their come up. Since I, once in a while, I like to watch Western movies, you know. <laughs> Guys get beat and so on. Uh, God can do perfect vengeance. He will uh, take his vengeance out on only those who deserve it. He will not take vengeance out on many of us who deserve it because we have Jesus standing there to take it for us. But this is a little glimpse into what we are going to miss out on. We will say. Verse 6. <coughs> Thus shall I deliver us from the Assyrian. When he comes into our land and when he treads within our borders, then the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people. It's still talking about his people, Israel. And like dew from the Lord, like showers on the grass. In other words, they will be the salt of the earth. As Jesus told them early on. Uh, nor wait for the sons of men. Okay. Uh, we could go on and read that, but I think get, get the idea, it's going to be a time when good and evil are separated and we don't have to mess with it any longer. Uh, I'm, uh, if you're like me, I'm getting tired of, of all of the unpunished crime and, and all of the drugs and the going on in the world. It's, it's, really, uh, it, it's, it's really discouraging. But when we look at it in this light, this is what is going to happen. It will happen even more. And in the end, God is victorious. And he has finally, after trying through this whole book, this whole Bible, can get through to his own chosen people. It's putting things in perspective. Yeah. You know, when people do stuff that's wrong and nobody gets punished, well, that right there is a reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that, that is that's good. a good fitting passage and, and to the situation today. Uh, justice is almost impossible to find. Where are we? Uh, we keep mentioning Babylon. And we showed, I'm going to show uh, one of the pictures we showed Thursday night, but a couple of others. This is an artist's rendition of Babylon. There in the foreground is the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, which is um, uh, one of, considered one of the wonders of the world, one of the seven wonders of the world, even though nobody has ever seen it and, and not even <laughs> as sure that it ever existed. That's why they wonder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there in the back you see a... a uh, <laughs> <laughs> he finally figured it out. <laughs> Okay, um, the, uh, in the back of the Tower of Babel, apparently, is what they're trying to uh, illustrate this all happened in this one place, in this Babylon, it is historical, it has it exists today uh, in ruins, uh, but uh, it will be the center of the evil, or, of, of God's dealing with evil, once and for all. Um, this is a reconstruction uh, of the uh, gate, of the Ishtar gate, into the city of Babylon. 
they have discovered and dug enough pieces of this to make a pretty accurate uh, reconstruction. In other words, it was a flush, opulent place. We don't even have this kind of an entrance when we go into cities today with all the technology we have and the ability. Uh, it's, it's really something. Uh, this is Avalon, Babylon today. Uh, just ruined. There's a city called Babylon. It's not right on the site. It's nearby. Uh, okay, uh, we have a couple of minutes just to read the last part of Revelation chapter 18, uh, starting on 22. The sound of harpists, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters shall not be heard in you anymore. No craftsman of any craft shall be found in you anymore. And the sound of millstones shall not be heard in you anymore. The sight of the lamp shall not shine in you anymore. And the voice of the bridegroom and bride shall fail to be heard anymore. Um, in other words, he's, he's listing the, the things that made life exciting and interesting in this town with all the money they had. Uh, they couldn't buy CDs and cars and things in those days, but they could spend it on opulent buildings. They could spend it on entertainment. They could uh, spend it on, especially on exotic food and uh, some entertainment. Okay, uh, we're listing these things. But they're not going to be there for your merchants, for the great men of the earth, okay. as opposed to great men of God. Of the earth. Of the earth. The earth For by your sources <coughs> all nations were deceived, and that's true. All nations are wrapped up in material pursuits. Amen. <coughs> and in here was found the blood of prophets <coughs> and saints and all of all who were slain on the earth. Um, Psalm 34, <coughs> Psalm 34, 16, uh, the face of the Lord against those who do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. It is prophetic of what will be happening when this uh, revelation is fulfilled. We will be taken out, and uh, the bad guys will lose. They'll, they'll get their just dessert. Um, the Lord is near those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Humility is almost non-existent today. Humility between in family, humility between neighbors, even in churches. That humility is something we need to cultivate. And saves have had, such as have a contrary spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of all. He guards all his borders, all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Uh, but, this is really a double illustration here. Who else, the one who took the, the uh, burden of our sins, had no broken bones? So this is a reference to that. It is also could be a, a, it is a reference to the fact that in their culture, the Hebrew culture, the bones were the sacred things. They saved the bones of those who were not dead. When they, Joseph, uh, wanted to make sure when they left Egypt they took his bones with him, even though he would be, be dead. So that's making that. The bones will not be broken. Uh, in other words, nothing but good things will happen to the righteous. That would be his interpretation here. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate righteousness shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the souls of his servants. So it's not saying that God will prevent us from being martyred if it comes to that. He's not preventing it from happening in Africa right now, but he will be there. He is there. 
and uh, as Paul said, the rich die in pain. And none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. None. Uh, so the things that we're reading about, let's not fall into the trap of supporting or even living close to that type of a lifestyle. Let's just pull the bait in the other direction. That's the point of this whole thing. Heavenly Father, thank you for that your word. We thank you for the promises. Lord, we thank you that we know that what is going on around us today is temporary. This earth is temporary. The world is temporary. Our worldly life is temporary. Help us to trust in you and enjoy the blessings of coming to know you even more each day as we draw closer through your word, through prayer, through witnessing, and uh, uh, through the different services that we, we do. We want you to be primal in our life. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, John. Yeah. In my devotions this week, I was reading in Job 9.24. <clears throat> it says, when a land falls into the hands of the wicked, he blindfolds its judges. And that's, I'm thinking a lot wow. about just what you just said about, you know, you'd like to see some uh, justice, you know, performed and